In this video, we're going to talk about five specific things that will help make your no code app sticky. You know, a lot of focus goes into developing your feature set or acquiring your first users or nailing down that perfect pricing model. But in order to make your life easier as a no code app entrepreneur, it's really beneficial for you to think about creating a sticky app as you work through your development, as you work toward acquiring those first users. Imagine if every single user who you brought on board stayed on board indefinitely. Think about how much revenue you could generate, how much you could grow your business. You see, most people focus on that feature development, that initial acquisition. But today we're going to walk through how to focus on the stickiness of your app as you're building it so that instead of just going after those quick hit initial conversions, you can have those user conversions, but then keep those users on board and have a less stressful time growing your company because of it. Stick around until the end because we also have a deep dive workshop that is gonna help you take your next steps as an app entrepreneur in the no code space. So I want you to get your hands on that. Hey, it's Kristen over at Coaching No Code Apps. We help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom apps so they can launch their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding. And if that's what you're doing, then subscribe to this channel for new videos to help you every single week. Sticky aspect number one, make sure your users are exposed to the features that are most valuable to them right away. So the reality is a lot of app users will sign up but then they'll never come back to the app. And so we wanna make sure once they come on board, we can actually keep them on board. And there are some specific ways you can help do this. Number one, make your onboarding steps as quick and as easy as possible. You don't wanna make them read through a novel in order to use your app. Number two, cut the clutter from your app and only include what's actually necessary. So how do you make those onboarding steps really quick, concise, and succinct? Well, you don't have too much information that you need to expose users to in the first place. Number three, give your users a goal to achieve that's actually going to benefit them in real life applications. So not just get them clicking here and then clicking there, but have them actually complete a task that will result in some sort of an outcome that they find value in. And number four, track your users' usage of the app so that you can reach out to them and catch them before they actually do churn for good. All right, sticky aspect number two, build a well-performing app. The quickest way to lose your users is to have an app that does not perform well because that's just going to frustrate them and naturally they're not gonna come back and use it. Now, if you're using Bubble, we have a video to help you build a scalable app. So definitely check that out. And remember that there's perceived performance and then there's actual performance. The actual performance is the outcome of your development practices and techniques. Are you using Bubble in the right ways so that your app does perform well. And then perceived performance is how the user feels the app is performing. At a certain point in some situations, things are just going to take a while. You know, maybe you are doing really, really complex calculations or something like that, and it just needs a little bit of time. While a user will perceive their performance based on what you have them do while they're waiting. Sticky aspect number three, use things like gamification and progress bars throughout your app where it makes sense to. You know, no matter how easy your app is to use, there are often going to be steps or processes that a user has to go through that just take a little while. You know, maybe you're having to intake uh, a little bit of information and it requires the user to sit down and go through a certain number of steps to put in that information. Well, oftentimes if something is taking a while or if it seems like it might take a while, a user is going to set it aside, go off and do all the other things they want to be doing and then plan on coming back later and finishing that process. But what usually happens is they never actually come back and that's when the user churns. So where you anticipate having these points where a user could stop and say, I'm gonna do this a little bit later because it's gonna take me more than a few minutes. Think about using things like 
gamification or progress bars. You know, maybe a user has to go through a certain number of steps in order to achieve an outcome with your app. Well, that's a great opportunity to gamify the app and have um, some sort of coin system, award system, badge system for completing those steps or even some notifications. You know, it doesn't have to be complex. Um, but even something as simple as a form they're filling out. Maybe it is a three-page form and they finished page one, they're on page two, and they don't know how many pages are left. That's a point where they might stop and say, I'm going to come back later. And you could have kept them around in that hypothetical scenario with a simple progress bar. Sticky aspect number four, make sure you're actually building a valuable app. This one's pretty obvious, but there's more to it. Right. A lot of times you will want to build the full scope app right out of the gates instead of launching an MVP app. And I say you, but I'm really just talking about the general you. That's the case with all of us as entrepreneurs. We're kind of perfectionists. Right. And so we want to build and launch a really perfect app. But the reality is to to provide the most value in your app. You need to launch early so you can start getting feedback right away. So build the very core feature set that you know is going to solve a problem for a user and then start solving that problem because that's the valuable thing. And then as you think about adding on these expanded features or these other ideas you have that would make the app even more valuable, get your users feedback because you don't want to add value to the app based on what you think is going to be valuable. You want to add value based on what they think is valuable, because when you do that, they stick around and they'll continue to pay you because they're continuing to find value. And sticky aspect number five is to reiterate that value wherever you can. You always want to add value for a user that you can measure. And if you can measure that value, then you can reiterate that data back to your user to show them just how much value they're receiving from the app. So here's what I mean. For example, let's say you're building an email marketing platform. Well, what if you showed a data point on your user's dashboard that showed them how many of their customers had converted from one of the marketing emails they sent from your app? Well, if you showed that value back to your users, then they're going to have a hard time leaving the app because they're seeing just how many customers they're getting from using your app. Or let's say you're building a team project management app. What if you kept a running tab of tasks or projects that were completed by a certain team and you showed that back to them on a dashboard? Well, those projects are moving the business forward or moving the, their department projects or goals for the quarter forward, for example. Or what if you were building a real estate dashboard? You know, what if you showed real estate agents how many sales your app helped them generate and they could see that number every single time they came into the app? When the value your users are receiving is front and center, they're going to have a hard time ever wanting to leave the app because why the heck would they? So if you can think about the value your app is providing your users and find a way to measure that, and then if you can convey that back to them periodically or constantly, you know, every time they log in, that's a really good signal that will help keep them around. Now, of course, there are tons of other things that will make your app stickier, but these are five that are easy for you to implement right now leading up to your first launch. And if you are in that stage right now where you haven't yet launched your app, you're still doing your development, or maybe you haven't even started yet, then I want you to head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop to get access to an extended training that's essentially going to help you take the next steps as a no code app entrepreneur so you can launch your app and grow your business and ultimately take control over your lifestyle. So head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop and we'll see you there. I hope this video was helpful and we'll see you in the next one.